Hi, it's Rob Vines, and welcome back to the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. And uh, today's entry is called Dr. Mel's 4D Glasses. It's dated October 24th, 2008. And if you'd like to read along, go to tenthdimension.com slash blog. Uh, there's lots of links included in the text versions of these that you can click on. For instance, uh, right at the very start of this blog, uh, I talk about uh, the comic that we see here, which was uh, forwarded to me by my buddy John from a link on Photobucket. And uh, this is from a comic strip called Tim Rickard's uh, Brewster Rocket Space Guy, which I also provide a link uh, in my uh, blog for you to be able to subscribe to that uh, comic. Thanks for thinking of me, John. One year ago, editor Tom Houston of Enlighten Next magazine, which until recently was known as What is Enlightenment magazine, conducted a telephone interview with me intended for the magazine's WIE Unbound website. Unfortunately, that interview has never been released, as the WIE Unbound team felt that the discussion Tom and I got into would be too difficult to follow for persons not already familiar with my animation or my book. This is a shame, because I thought Tom did a great job of leading the interview along and pulling things back if he felt I was going too fast for persons unfamiliar with the concepts. But now, I'm thrilled to be able to tell you that the publishers of that magazine, as of just a couple of days ago, have kindly consented to release the raw recordings of that interview for me to be able to publish it here. Our plan is to have this 45-minute interview available in this blog entry, if you're reading in the, the text version, and as a downloadable MP3 for people wanting to play it on their iPods and audio players. If everything went according to plan, you should be able to do that from the links you'll find within the text version of this blog entry. One of the first questions Tom asked me was about a topic I'd not thought about for years, the Trafalmadorians, a fictional race from Kurt Vonnegut's writing, featured prominently in his wonderful novel, Slaughterhouse Five. Tom wondered how the unique point of view of this alien race could be related to my way of visualizing the dimensions. Like Dr. Mel in the cartoon we're looking at here, these fanciful creatures were, according to Vonnegut's tale, able to see time the way we see 3D space, with the past and future stretching out like a mountain range into the distance. It's interesting to think of that idea in the context of Dr. Mel's special 4D glasses from the, this comic, because all elements of the movie Dr. Mel is about to watch are locked in and predetermined, so the ending that would be approaching within the next couple of hours would be clearly defined with no possible ambiguity, and would therefore be easily seen by Dr. Mel's special 4D spectacles. Likewise, in entries like Hypercubes in Plato's Cave, we've talked about visualizing four-dimensional shapes. Dr. Mel's glasses would have no problem showing the additional spatial dimension of a hypercube, a, a four-dimensional cube with its additional spatial dimension being at an additional right angle to the length, width, and depth of the third dimension, because just like a movie's predetermined ending, a hypercube shape would be locked in and unchanging when viewed from the fourth dimension. Likewise, in my entry, The Past is an Illusion, I talked about a fun little flash game called Xerox, which allows you to guess shapes from the lower dimensions, and the idea that this game can only be played because the shapes you're looking at don't change unless you guess correctly. Thinking about walking around with these 4D specs on in real life, though, would be another matter entirely. Since real life is not a movie or a hypercube, there are many possible futures and pasts, so the 4D shapes would be fluid and constantly changing. With this project, I've been insisting that the probability space of those possible branches is really in the fifth dimension, and the fact that Einstein also embraced the idea that our reality is defined at the fifth dimension seems to be a confirmation which, mysteriously, few people ever talk about, except me. Is there one most likely outcome that could happen one minute from now? Then that's what would be part of what you see with Dr. Mel's 4D glasses, or with the perspective of the Trafalmadorians. If some new random event or deliberate choice right now changed what was more likely to happen one minute into the future, then that would become part of the new landscape seen from this constantly evolving 4D perspective. Which leads us back to Feynman's Sum Over Histories, approach to quantum mechanics, also known as the path integral formulation, interestingly enough. And the Deutsch team's proof that our quantum and macro realities are both part of the same continuum. 
From the 4D perspective, we could look at the path from the beginning to the end of our universe and say that there is one path that is more likely than all the others to take place, simply by averaging all the possible paths together. Now, would that be the path actually taken? When you think about it, that's really highly unlikely. That, after all, is the nature of taking averages. There will naturally be parts of the data which fall well outside the norm, but all those large deviations will cancel out in the biggest picture of all. And in order to see the ray of all possible pasts and futures that could be taken by a subatomic particle, or a human being, or by the universe as a whole, Dr. Mel would have to put away his 4D specs and pull out the 5D ones. For more about the ideas of the most likely paths for our universe and how that relates to the universe we are actually observing, you might want to check out unlikely events in timelessness or randomness and the missing 96%. Next blog, we're going to talk a little more about the difference between the fourth and fifth dimensions with a fun entry called Predicting the Future, Here Come the Aliens. To close, here's one of my songs about trying to visualize the biggest picture of all, where everything is forever and everything fits together. What if you were to somehow change your perspective so you could see the universe simultaneously, right from its beginning to its end? This song is called Big Bang Through Entropy. My name's Rob Bryanton. This is the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. Enjoy the journey. I slowed down Till I heard the moon I heard the moon ringing Ringing like a bell I slowed down Till I felt the earth I felt the blitz sliding Skaters on a pond And I finally felt the long groove Moving underneath Birds and deaths of galaxies Pounding out the beat And I finally heard the whole song at once Big Bang to Entropy Big Bang to Symmetry Big bang to everything I slowed down Till I saw the sun I saw the sun spinning On a pinwheel's arm And I saw the long chain Of our DNA Touching back to the beginning for so long And I saw the mighty ocean that surrounds and sustains Connecting us together in a song I slowed down Till I saw the song There's only one of many more than many more And I finally felt the long groove Moving underneath Earth's and deaths of galaxies Pounding out the beat And I finally heard the whole song at once Big Bang to Entropy Big Bang to Symmetry Big Bang to everything It begins as nothing Silence at the end Every song's the same After or before But the parts in between There are so very many forms More than we could ever hope to know 